Hi Barry, it's great to speak to you here today at MWC24. Really looking forward to having a conversation about 5G monetization and where you see that world and how it's being built. Perhaps a good place to start would be, tell us how you view the world of 5G monetization at the moment and how your experience has been. Yeah, Sean, thank you for asking. Actually, it has been five years since the first 5G commercial launch in 2019. So within these five years, we can clearly summarize what really happened on 5G monetization. Now, uh, until the end of 2023, it has been more than 1.6 billion 5G users, which account for 20% okay, around of the total mobile connections. And these 20% uh, uh, mobile connections and 5G users contribute almost 30% of the total mobile traffic and uh, generate almost 40% of the total revenue. Uh, based on our statistic and also third parties report, so in 2023, more than 90% of the operator, 5G operator, got uh, positive revenue growth. So we can have a conclusion, 5G really is a good technology to help operator to increase their revenue. So based on the best, best practice of the last five years, we can summarize how to monetize 5G in three phases. Traffic monetization, repairs monetization, and new service monetization. So traffic monetization is the foundation, okay? We provide a better or more data package to the subscriber, and subscriber will have to pay more, okay, for the better experience. But uh, 5G is not only capable on the downlink, okay, but 5G is also capable on uplink on the latency. So which gives operators the opportunity to further monetize their network uh, by uh, multi-dimensional experience. Okay, I'm sure this is also required by the users. Mm -hmm. Then we move to the diversified new service. This is also a new trend which is already happening in China, uh, in Middle East, some leading uh, countries. So this is my overall uh, uh, feedback on your question. Oh, well, I think that's really positive and I think a really good uplift. One of the things that we're seeing emerge inside 5G and monetization of 5G mm -hmm. is quality of service tariffing. How they're charging by speeds or, or other elements. Uh, how do you view that? How do you see that as part of that monetization story? Yes, uh, actually uh, for the last uh, several years we have been working closely with operator on this uh, aspect. I think the key is uh, operators should fulfill the requirement from different market segmentation users. Because uh, some users, they need uh, the higher speed, or they need the VIP services. Some users, they need uplink guaranteed speed. Mm -hmm. Or some gaming users, they may need the uh, very good gaming experience, which require low latency from the network. That's why we cooperate with the global operators to promote such, such kind of uh, tariff and package to different market segmentation. For example, uh, in China Unicom, Last year, together, we delivered the uplink package for the live streamers, especially, you know, the TikTok now is oh, very yes, popular. Yes, yes, <laughs> A yes. lot of KOL, they doing the live streaming outdoor in some place of interest. So, uh, China Unicom, they provide 150 uh, megabps uplink speed for the KOL, with almost 40% uh, up increase. Uh, within one year, the China Unicom developed around 200,000 uh, users wow. on this uplink. Uh, package. Another case is from Thailand AIS. We work with them. Uh, they they provide the hotspot based experience uh, package. Because as you know, in Bangkok there are a lot of uh, places of interest. Tourists will go there, so the traffic will be congested. But some of the users they would like to pay more, you know, to have better service compared to the common users. <laughs> Just like you are upgraded from economic class to the business class, yes, you want yes. to pay a little bit more. So this gives the operators further uh, do the upselling okay, on the 5G package. So this is two examples uh, I, I think uh, is, which is very good. And also quick one for the other operators, they can copy it easily. Yeah. So fantastic quality of service building on that. I think that's a really exciting new area of revenue for, custom, for your customers and for the operators. Perhaps one of the other things we see is the building of new services on 5G, where as we saw in 4G, great new services emerge because the network is available. Are you seeing much of those, the new services available on 5G around the world? Uh, yes, the most uh, exciting news okay, from the beginning of the year is the AI. The AI development is very fast, more than our thought, especially at the beginning of this year, the generative AI has been applied to many areas. For example, in China, uh, we have a new calling service from China Mobile. This new calling service 
uh, increase the MOU for operators. Before, most of the, uh, the, the, the voice uh, uh, service is go to OTT, go to WeChat. But with this new calling service launched by China Mobile, the lot of users, they would like to, to make the, the normal phone call provided by the uh, operators because during the phone call, they can have a digital, uh, more digital avatar, uh, these right. kind of features. Right. And also in the Chinese New Year, people can give greetings of Chinese New Year by these new, new callings. Right. They can say Happy New Year and there, there will be some cartoon showed on the okay. screen. So this encourages more and more people to use operators' traditional voice call, not yeah. only by OTT. So this is a very, very uh, encouraging service from China Mobile, uh, also powered by AI, because uh, your digital face, you upload your, uh, your photo, picture to the cloud, give you a cartoon image back to your screen. So this is one, one application. Another one developed very fast, uh, we call uh, Godfrey 3D. I'm sure you have experienced from our, our booth. I have. Godfrey 3D, last year, mo most operators think that the bottleneck is a content. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, you just upload your 2D, a uh, uh, video to the cloud. The cloud can give you back the very high quality 3D video, and then you can you can watch it. You can have a very very good experience. So this also powered by AI. So I think uh, the 5.5G technology is coming. So together with AI technology and cloud cloud technology, the telecommunication industry will be evolved from 5G to 5.5G. Yeah. So this is a uh, uh, very promising uh, evolution path. And we are working with global leading operators, not only in China, but also in, uh, in Middle East, and also in Finland, some leading European 5G operators to promote this 5.5G industry. Wow, okay. Yeah. So that's really interesting about the services. If we go a bit broader into the service that the operators are delivering on 5G, which perhaps we didn't see a lot of on 4G, one of the ones I think is fixed wireless access and where that is in the marketplace. Perhaps fixed wireless access is one of the things you could talk a little bit more about because it's gone from being a, an interesting part of the market to being a very exciting part of the market. Yes, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, this is a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> FWA, you know, in 4G, yeah, no one thinks FWA is, is a must choice. No. But in 5G, the statistic, more than 50% of operators already launched F, uh, FWA mm -hmm. after they deploy 5G network. And also compared to 4G, 5G FWA not only provide a higher speed, but also provide guaranteed speed. This is very important. Yes. Before, we can only say we provide package uh, to the users. Okay, this is up to 100 megabps or up to 200 megabps. But now in 4G era, we can, we can commit to customer. We give you guaranteed 100 megabps or guaranteed 200 megabps. This is thanks to the bigger capability of the 5G network itself. And also, we have a tool. We call it the uh, FW Suite. This can monitor the user experience and we can real time you know, adjust the radio resource to guarantee the speed what the operator commit to the subscriber. So moving forward, we believe FWA is an ultimate access technology. It's not only a temporary, because 5.5G uh, technology enabled FWA uh, could provide one gigabps speed, which we call it really fabric-like <laughs> access technology. Before we call it uh, fiber complementary. Now we can say fiber like. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so this is really the big change. So make the FWA an ultimate uh, broadband uh, uh, solution. Yeah. Right. So consumer, new services, fixed wireless access, very exciting, genuinely see fast growth in those things as we do as an analyst firm. What about the enterprise? 5G I think offers a great deal to the enterprise. And of course it's a very central part of how many operators are monetizing 5G. Mm. How do you feel about the enterprise with 5G? Yeah, uh, two years ago, how 5G can help on the enterprise uh, market is a very difficult uh, uh, question, even difficult area, mm -hmm. because 5G uh, for enterprise need a very mature ecosystem, and also uh, need an operator to have strong capability to do the system integration, service integration, something like this. But after the two years of development, we see a very positive signal that uh, 5G2B is on the track for replication. So operators can quickly replicate the mature fabric 2 b cases uh, in two areas. First, we call it a wide area private network, which operator can provide fabric 2 b use cases based on their public already deployed fabric network. For example, fabric for Metro. All these scenarios happen outdoor, and uh, this need uh, the public uh, coverage from the operators. And all the terminal, the system integrator, it's mature enough, you know, in most of the countries. So operators could do the replication rapidly. 
Second scenario we call it the compass the private network, which will be a little more difficult. And the most challenging question from the enterprise would be, uh, why I need 5G? Wi-Fi is a more economic solution. True. So now the industry has a uh, common understanding. It has answer. From a serious aspect, 5G has advantage. First uh, is the latency, because in the most factory, okay, they need to adjust their product uh, oftenly. So and also they need to transfer back the data in the very uh, low latency. So 5G could enable this. But Wi-Fi, because of their you know interference need more than 200 millisecond latency, which 5G only uh, 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 can provide 20 millisecond. This is the first. Second is the reliability. Yeah, 5G has a uh, higher reliability than Wi-Fi network. 5G can support 99.99, uh, <laughs> but uh, Wi-Fi can only provide 99%. Okay. The last advantage is uplink, because in some of the uh, factory, they need to do the uh, cockpit inspection which is they need a 4K video to take the video and upload it to the cloud server to do the analysis. Uh, 5G could enable the more than 500 uh, megabps uplink speed, uh, but however, Wi-Fi can only provide uh, less than 50 megabps. So this uh, makes it serious advantage, which is already acknowledged uh, by most of the operators. So in conclusion, we believe from 2024, 5G2B replication uh, could be in a fast track, uh, faster than, than ever. Fantastic. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to what's coming over the next two years in 5G and 5G Advanced. Yeah, Sean, could I ask you one question back? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure as a third party, you have experienced all the booths from different uh, operators, different vendors. So this year, I believe 5.5G and AI are two hottest topic. Mm -hmm. So what is your general feeling about uh, this uh, two new area? Well, I think if you look at our industry in total, yeah. In the past 10 years, everybody gets excited about phones. Yeah. And I think that's been fine, all good, but phones have got a bit boring in the last five years. Yeah. They're great phones, but they're a bit boring. Where the party is in the network, because the party in the network is how we're gonna make money in the long run. Yeah. And if we're trying to make the network better, 5G and 5G Advanced is the only way we can do that. Yeah. Because the kind of services and the applications that we're trying to build on those networks can only come with that throughput and that speed and that capacity, yeah. and as you said, the latency. So we are very much positive about where 5G is taking us. We're very much positive about how that builds, but we also recognize that to make that money, to monetize these networks and the investment, you have to create partnerships. And you have to do that with companies who deliver AI or you deliver your own AI. Mm. And there are other things as well, like cloud security and IoT, all the things you spoke about earlier. Mm. And I don't think that's straightforward. I think that game is being played out right now but everybody understands that it's very valuable. There's a big pot of treasure at the end, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And then how we get there is how we build it and how we work together to make it happen. So I think I'm very positive about what's going on. I think this show has showed me two things. Um, first of all, the last two years we've talked about what is 5G. Now we're talking about what do you use it for? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where monetization yeah. comes in. Very exciting. The second thing is understanding the level of partnerships that need to be delivered to make it the best value for you. And I think listening to the AA guys, listening to the cloud guys, listening to the IoT guys, has been really interesting in the way that they all reflect on one another to make that money work. Mm. So I, I'm really excited about it. I don't want to talk about phones, I want to talk about networks because that's how we're going to make our money in the future. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Sean. I think uh, this is very good feedback. I think maybe next year we can talk more about how to monetize 5.5G. Absolutely. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.